Warning, stop doing this to your child OR ward. You will regret it in the nearest future. Hello beautiful people, welcome to the channel and thank you for your constant love and support towards the growth of the channel. I appreciate you all and I pray that God will continue to bless you and shine his light upon you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In today's video, I'll be showing you how the negative words and utterances we say to our children and wards can affect them and even you in the future. If you find yourself doing this, then I'll advise you stop it from today because you will regret it in the future. Alex, time to wake up. You're not going to sleep through the day again. Just five more minutes, Dad. No more excuses, Alex. You have responsibilities. Get up. Fine, fine, I'm up. And don't forget what we talked about last night. Your chores need to be done before I leave for work. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Took you long enough. Now, go wash my car before I head out. Seriously, Dad, can't it wait? I'm having a bad headache. No, it can't. You know I need it for work. And besides, it will do you some good to get to do some manual labor for a change. And don't forget to clean the wheels properly this time. Oh my goodness. What is this? What nonsense did Alex do to this car? Alex, Alex, get back here this instant. Yes, Dad. Look at this mess. Do you call this washed? I'll fix it right away, Dad. I promise. You worthless, irresponsible excuse for a son. I can't believe I have to put up with your incompetence day in and day out. You can't even do a simple task like washing a car properly. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll do better, I promise. Sorry isn't good enough. You're lazy, useless, and a complete failure. I don't know why I bother expecting anything from you. You're a disgrace. I should have never even bothered bringing you into this world. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll do better. I promise. Sorry for yourself. Emily, what's the matter, dear? How did the examination go? Mom, I didn't make it. I failed the examination. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry to hear that. But remember, this is just a setback, not the end of the road. But mom, I feel like such a failure. Dad is going to be so disappointed in me. Your father loves you, Emily, more than anything in this world. And yes, he may have high expectations, but he also knows that failure is a part of life. What's important is how you pick yourself up and keep moving forward. I'll try again, mom. I won't give up. That's the spirit. Emily, what is this I hear about you failing your examination? Have you no sense of responsibility or ambition? Dad, I tried my best. Your best? Your best wasn't good enough, was it? You've disappointed me yet again with your incompetence and laziness. John, please, she's already upset. Yelling at her won't help. She needs to learn the consequences of her actions. She's a failure, just like her brother. I don't even know the kind of children I gave birth to. They are just useless. I doubt if they will even amount to anything. Look at my friend's daughter Lillian. She passed her college entry exam. Does she have two heads? You and your brother are just bent on disgracing me. All the money I'm spending on you both is just a waste. You are just good for nothing. All you know how to do is dress up and wear makeup. Nothing else. I'm sure you're gallivanting with boys instead of studying. That's why you failed. Get out of my sight before I slap you. John, we need to talk. It's not right to always be so harsh on the kids. Sarah, I only do it because they need to understand the importance of putting in more effort. They can't just coast through life expecting everything to be handed to them on a silver platter. I understand that, John. But there's a difference between pushing them to do better and tearing them down with your words. Emily is already feeling terrible about her results, and yelling at her like that only makes it worse. I just want them to succeed, Sarah. I want them to be the best they can be. I know you do, John. But sometimes, being supportive and understanding is more effective than being strict and critical. 
Our kids need to know that we believe in them, no matter what. These children needs to be handled with iron hand, else they will go astray. Please I need to sleep I'm tired. Sarah, where's the car? I need to leave for the function. I thought you gave Alex permission to go out with the car today. What? I didn't give him any such permission. Where did he go? I'm not sure, John. He didn't mention where he was going. That boy never learns to ask for permission before taking things. This is awesome, Alex. Your dad's car has some killer sound. Yeah, man, let's take this baby for a spin. Woohoo. This is insane, Alex. This is what life's all about, Jake. Living in the moment. Hell yeah, Alex. Let's make some memories. Alex slow down, we're about to crash into a parked car. Oh no, I can't slow down, I have lost control of the steering. Oh no. We're going to crash. <coughs> oh no. What are you going to do now? You just crashed your father's car. Don't bother about that, it's not a big deal. My dad should be happy that I didn't even die in the process. That's right. So are we still meeting tomorrow? Definitely. Nothing can stop the fun. Alex, come here. We need to talk. What's up, Dad? Need something? Don't play games with me, Alex. Where's the car? Oh, you mean the car that's now a total wreck? Yeah, about that. What do you mean, a wreck? What happened? Oh, you know, just a little joyride with Jake. We were having some fun and things got a bit out of hand. Long story short, the car's trashed. Are you kidding me, Alex? You endangered your life and others' lives with your stupidity. And now you stand here, acting like it's no big deal. Relax, Dad, it's just a car. We can always get another one. No need to get all worked up about it. You have no idea the consequences of your actions, Alex. This isn't just about the car. It's about your reckless behavior and complete disregard for authority and responsibility. Whatever, Dad, I'll deal with it, or maybe I won't, who knows. Can I help you? Are you John? John Smith. Yes, I'm John. What's wrong? It's about your daughter, Emily. She's been having an affair with my husband. Wow. What are you saying? That can't be true. I wish it weren't true, but I caught them together, John. I saw it with my own eyes. I couldn't let it go on any longer without saying something. Are you sure you're not mistaken? Maybe there's some misunderstanding. I wish there was, but I know what I saw. Your daughter has been sneaking around with my husband behind my back, betraying our trust and destroying our family. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'll talk to Emily about it. Emily where are you coming from dressed like this? What is wrong with my dressing? Emily, we need to talk. What's up dad? Emily, I just had a visit from a woman who claims that you've been having an affair with her husband. Oh, please. That's absurd. Some people just can't handle the fact that I'm living my life to the fullest. Emily, this is serious. If there's any truth to what she's saying. Spare me the lecture, dad. I don't owe anyone an explanation for how I choose to live my life. If they can't handle it, that's their problem, not mine. Emily, this is not just about your life anymore. Your actions have consequences, not just for you, but for others as well. I don't need you or anyone else telling me how to live my life, Dad. I'm old enough to make my own decisions, whether you like it or not. Emily, I'm not trying to control you. I just want what's best for you, for all of us. Well, maybe what's best for me is to live my life on my own terms, without someone constantly breathing down my neck and judging me. I'm tired, I need to get some rest. John, what's wrong? You look upset. 
It's the children, Sarah. I just don't understand what's gotten into them. What do you mean? They're both so, wayward, so reckless. Emily with her defiance and arrogance, and now this accusation of an affair. And Alex. God knows what trouble he's gotten himself into this time. I know it's difficult, John. But we can't give up on them. They're our children, no matter what mistakes they make. But why us, Sarah? Why can't our children be like other people's? Successful, responsible, bringing pride instead of disgrace. Every family has its struggles, John. We'll get through this together, just like we always have. I just wish they'd realize the consequences of their actions before it's too late. Look at me, I'm already old and weak. Yet none of my child is doing well. They're still feeding off me and are not willing to take life seriously. This is not the nond of life I planned for my old age. I have a high blood pressure now and it's all because of them. I'm just tired. As parents, it is our duty to shape our children's lives in a positive and nurturing way. The words we use can have a profound impact on their self-esteem and overall happiness. Unfortunately, many parents unknowingly use negative words when communicating with their children. It is essential to understand why avoiding such language is crucial for their emotional well-being and future success. The power of words cannot be understated, especially in the context of children's development. Negative words, such as, stupid, lazy, or, useless, can create a toxic environment that fosters self-doubt and a lack of confidence. Children who hear negative words regularly may internalize these beliefs and start doubting their abilities. This negative self-perception can hinder their academic performance, social interactions, and overall personal growth. Moreover, the use of negative words creates a hostile and disconnected atmosphere at home. Studies have shown that harsh words and criticism increase the likelihood of behavioral issues and emotional disturbances in children. This can strain the parent-child relationship and deteriorate the trust and open communication necessary for healthy development. Also, there are dare spiritual implications of uterine negative and abusive words on your children or wards. Proverbs 18:21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. The tongue is a weapon that keeps alive or cause death to a person. Proverbs 21:23 Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. No doubt most times children can be very annoying and can push you to your boundaries. At that point you are frustrated and want to discipline them. Cursing on them is the wrong thing to do. Because there is power in the tongue and as a parent, when you speak a word into your child's life, it's likely to affect that child. Just as when you bless a child. James 1:19, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. No matter how your child offends you, try not to curse on them or use negative words on them. You might think you're just saying mere words, but you might live to regret it in the future. Thank you for watching, please share this video out for more visibility. And let me know if you will like me to make a video on how to reverse negative utterances and curses spoken to children by parents. Kindly support the channel by hitting on the subscribe button below, like our video, leave your contributions or experience in the comment section below and remember to turn on post notifications to the channel for more interesting and life-changing videos. God bless you.